Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. In the last video, we finally got the main quest started again, and we are currently escorting Svetlana on her mission to escape and uh, go to... Um, are we walking together? I think so. Her mission to escape to Vienna in Austria. How about a drink, Mikalek? Or Gelova. Yeah, so I guess we're just... Hanging around with Javier until he decides to stop. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. Come on, buddy. Don't mind me. Completely normal behavior. I have an update on the secret things, which I will talk about at some point during this video. Depends how long this bit goes on for. I might just talk about it now. I mentioned a couple videos ago that I was waiting for later that day to, you know, find out some information, basically. And now they've chosen this exact moment for me to... I'm gonna have to beat someone up, aren't I? <laughs> of course I am. You damn wife fucker. You've ruined my life. Your chica did what she wanted. Victor, tell him I'm right. Two of you? I'll fuck you both up. I'm going to get killed because someone disrespected the sanctity of marriage. Shit. Imagine... Cuckold being your nickname. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rough time. Are people watching on the train carriages nearby. Okay. Uh, don't care about focus ones, but we do need to break the damage ones. So let's look it up. Let's do the quick one there. Start to rack up some old wounds and stuff. Yeah, as per usual. Well, see, the combat in this game, I don't want to say I've figured it out and it's easy and it's boring <laughs> because the game will inevitably, you know, punish me for, for saying such things. But, um... Why is this over here, by the way? What's this symbol he's got? Oh, that's me. Oh! Oh, I can find... I didn't realise I could check Javier's stats. Um, but... One of the main criticisms I saw of this game was that the combat gets a bit repetitive, and it definitely does. You know, at the end of the day, we're doing basically the same thing every single time. Um, it's not why you play the game, you know, which is totally legitimate. The problem is, <laughs> there's tons of it, and my playstyle kind of lends itself to, you know, even more of it. So, that's slightly annoying, but it is what it is. God, that's going to hit. Bloody wedding is going to hit for so much damage. Because there's four people with suffering on them, so it's going to hit for 32. That's crazy. It's crazy! I'm also bleeding quite badly. We're going to have to... I um... can't remember who does it. There's someone who does the thing that removes my problem. Who is it who does it? I don't remember. We'll do it next time. There's one who will remove my negative stats. Or imprint them onto the enemy instead. But you know what? We're probably okay. Maybe we're okay. Stop slicing me. Ah! Oh, it's Javier, that's fine. <laughs> okay, if you slice Javier. Um, I want to get rid of this bleeding. Who was it? Velik. Yes, right, Velik. Uh, so who's got the most health? Uh, I'm going to stick this on you over there. So we're going to do... Oh God, I'm going to, I'm going to bleed three more times. I'm about to take a bit of a beat in here, honestly. Um, well, whatever. I'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Nothing to worry about. I'm not worried. I'm never worried. You know, all they're doing is racking up the bleeding so that I can transfer it all onto the enemy in a second. That's all. So Felix about to do that. I mean, they're all about to die, basically, anyway. Let's get a punch in there. That look is so crazy. <laughs> it's so just weird looking. Oh. Oh, he's got resistant damage. I'm a dummy. There we go. There's something very nice when they die synchronized. FBI, Have you ever up. considered celibacy? Your business would go better. But what kind of life would that be, Senora? It's funny, I get what they're going for with Javier. 
this kind of rakish Spanish scoundrel bedding all the women, but he he's not a good looking dude. <laughs> like he doesn't he's not I don't know, he doesn't sell it to me. There's something about like you just think you'd catch something, you know? But you know what? That that goes to show. You know, video games are a good proof of these things. That it's all it's all attitude. Well, it's like fifty percent attitude. Looks might get you through the door, but you need the right attitude. And that can also get you through the door. You're walking very close, you two. <laughs> Svetlana, what are you doing? <laughs> There's no need. Ariel! Ariel! But the boat can't hold that! There's no choice. If God wills it, a broom can shoot. Load it up. Vamonos. There's no time. I need another word with Victor. He doesn't have a chin. That's the issue. Senora. Time to pay up. Time's running out. I need the knowledge you promised me. What are you guys lagging around for? Hurry up! Your father moved in the circles of people who shared his views, who would like to see Poland back on the map. Do you understand what I mean? He was a patriot. Basically, what we're, what we're going to learn throughout this game is that thaumaturges were the foundation of the Russian Revolution. I didn't expect he could have gotten involved with such a lofty idea. He secretly dreamed of creating a force that would give true hope to the Polish people. One that might till the scales in favor of the independence fighters. Loka, quickly! He believed he didn't need a great army, just a handful of daredevils with extraordinary abilities. You getting in the boat or not? I need to go. Your father was a wonderful man, Victor. And you remind me of him a great deal. Thank you for everything. Wait, who are these people? How can I find them? I don't know. They hide in the shadows. Good luck. I trust that you'll find your grimoire, Viktor Shulski. Adieu. Keep an eye on those bequeathal papers. If there's a problem with payment, we'll reach out to you. Why are you so distrustful? When a poor man eats a chicken, one of them is sick. Amigos. It's like the opening to uh, Godzilla 1998. What is that? Heavier! Victor! It's like a golem. It's a golem. <laughs>
You think they're dead? They had no chance. Clad in clay and the fury of the sons of Israel will arise to crush their enemies. Get out of here. Golems follow blood. The farther away you are, the better. I don't believe it. Salutus can't physically manifest. Tell her to have you. Look at this guy teaching Kabbalah to a Jew. That was a golem, you schmuck. And it will pursue them until their blood is lost in the abysses of Sheol. You understand? I have many things to say, so I'm going to talk. <clears throat> First of all, I'm really disappointed we didn't get to fight that. I was quite excited. I was really looking forward to doing combat against someone that isn't just like four random dudes shooting me. I thought that was going to be quite exciting. So I'm a little sad about that, that we just drew it into the river, into the lake, into the sea. The other thing I was going to say, there's a whole thing about... People keep telling Victor how great his dad is. And obviously Victor had a fairly terrible upbringing and doesn't have a positive view of his father. And I just think that kind of discrepancy is really interesting because I think about my, my granddad was a brilliant astrophysicist. You know, worked at Harvard his entire life. Was one of the fathers of modern astrophysics. Like, I don't know how else to put it. He was a big deal in astrophysics. Um... And yet, and so so my dad obviously grew up with lots of people telling him how brilliant his dad is, and you know he's a genius and all this kind of jazz, and yada yada. But he was a terrible father. He wasn't even a good grandfather. I loved him. He was my granddad, but he wasn't a good grandfather. Never mind a good father. I think it's a lot easier to be a good grandfather than a good father or a good grandparent because you see your grandparents all the time. I think they kind of realize the mistakes they made the first time, or. Maybe they've got less in their lives at that point or something, but, yeah, either way. <clears throat> what am I supposed to do to get rid of him? The golem is going to look for you until he kills you and all of those of your blood. That is, unless you can figure out why he was sent after you, you must have really gotten under somebody's skin. I haven't done anything to anyone. <laughs> well, that's not true, is that it, Victor? That means someone of your blood did it. Do you hear me? Ask your blood. Get lost. Not exactly my favorite person right now. Well, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Why are you reacting like this to something that's entirely out of my control? The sins of the father are not the sins of the son. I guess there's nothing for me here. Golem. My first encounter with Golem was shocking. Up to that point, I hadn't met Salutor. That would be able to drape himself in physical matter and affect it. But being a huge pile of clay, Golem did not flinch from creating for himself a new way inside the riparian hangar. Golem follows blood, says Ariel Orofe. He follows it at someone's explicit order. I wonder who in our family might have crossed someone powerful. I think only Liggy is beyond all suspicion. I mean, you'd assume it's your dad, right? <clears throat> I'm excited about that, though. That, that's, that's a... Um, I can't remember the term. But it, it's a fundamental change to how our universe works right to how this game functions the idea that they can be physically manifest like that changes things dramatically i want more of that stuff right like it's been fine i've enjoyed it so far but like it's, it's time for for more of that kind of thing for me good to do <laughs> so Atlanta claims my father was a member of what he called a coterie the organization was supposedly striving for idealistic goals like Polish independence. Nonsense! I don't believe that Stanislav Svlitsky would have joined any organization that's formed for any other purpose than to satisfy his own ego. The thing as well, though. Like, we saw his father and he wasn't great, but you've got to keep in mind, Victor is not necessarily a reliable narrator. Everything we're seeing is from Victor's perspective. Um, and it's, is, you know, whim to his... At whim to his whims, basically. <laughs> Hello, stranger. I have to get out of the port. Something's happened on the pier. You think we didn't hear you? Now shut your trap, or you'll get the police on our asses. Yeah, we paid them not to see us, but not enough to ignore these kinds of shenanigans. And what else are you gonna tell them, moron? Your home address? Shut it and pack up. Oh, I'm sorry, next time I won't call a golem? Smugglers play police officers not to patrol too closely, they won't ignore them forever. Was that a sound of a fuck up? Shouldn't we check it out? Like hell we should. They don't pay me enough for that. Gentlemen, I have to get opposite. out of the port. It's urgent. 
What's a good citizen like you in such a hurry for? Papers. I thought I wouldn't have to resort to this, but since you insist. Of course, sir. We are sorry. Go right ahead. Didn't think I'd have to resort to pulling a piece of paper out. <laughs> the things you've made me do today. Keep having a little poke around. Not much in Port Praga, though, is there? I wonder if this is going to be a new location on the map. It's clear, like, looking at the world's map, that there's a lot of scope for... Oh, look, there's a fight. <laughs> Why can't I fight the cool thing? Why are you making me fight these? I don't really care about any of these, so we can just, uh, bukovatch it up. If I do bloody wedding, it's going to hit for quite a lot. It's going to hit for 24. It says 16, but it'll be 24 by then. <clears throat> Unless it's locked in. I guess we'll find out now. Alright, calm down. Oh, wait, we won't find out. I'm pretty sure that's how it will work, though. Pew! Victor's taken a beat and Annie, blood, you know. Left guy's gonna die. Okay. Nope. And. Yeah, whatever. Can't help myself. <laughs> Just do it constantly. I do like that final attack. It's very Indiana Jones versus the uh, the dude with the whip. No, I haven't leveled up at all today, which is very unlike me. I've been leveling up constantly lately. How many more do we need? Is it just one more? Yeah. Uh, obviously. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me. Um, we need another. We need another um, thing, Majiggy. Another solid tool. Okay. Don't even think of reaching for your magic book. Fanya's pistol has a very sensitive trigger. The second he moves, I'll blow his brains out, Chief. Chief, let's do our best not to have Vanya shoot you in the head. All right. All you have to do is tell us where Svetlana Petrovna is. You know, I never trusted you. I'm running to a phone. There's been an accident. I think the pier collapsed. Was Svetlana Romanceva there? There must be some mistake, Chief. The mistake was beating up my brother. You did seriously rough up my men at Romancewa's apartment. You can hand over the ID too. You won't need it anymore. Svetlana. We've got to find her, Victor. I'm, I'm trying to admit. I'm trying to avoid admitting anything. The last time we saw one another was probably at the party with the ghost. The one that got ruined. Don't you remember? He'll have to try harder than that. I'll shoot him, Chief. We haven't got time, Victor. We need to find out where she is. Mate, I've been we shot, know like... you helped Rumianso escape. 20 times. And I know. She was sleeping with your father. I told you. He had no secrets from me. I was helping him. I'm running out of patience. Where is she? What if I keep dilly dallying if he'll actually shoot me? I didn't like my father. No one did. 
But his collaborating with the Okhrana seems improbable to me. A wealthy Pole in the Russian partition who avoided not one, but two serious scandals, a divorce and your incident with Nejets. Would he have managed on his own? The question is, what did Svetlana know? Okay, that's he's suggesting then that um, our father was on the side. What's going on with my elbow? Our father was on the side of the Hrana. Oh, Hrana. Um, but also Svetlana was saying the opposite. The, the secret police are working for the Russian government, right? That's the idea. They're kind of like trying to keep Russian control. Um, hunting down patriots, inverted commas. So was he playing both sides? Was he keeping... Ivan close in order to get more information? Was he keeping Svetlana close to get more information? Who was our father actually aligned with, is the question. And what do the secret police want from her? That woman was a Gordian knot. I know that she spent years compiling all sorts of compromising material against the Tsar's government. She was a traitor. We were observing her but she managed to get everything out of her apartment. I need to know if her knowledge could threaten the security of the nation. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that'd be able to dodge it. If you want something from me, you just need to ask. I have a better idea. You tell me what you know, and I... I know where your papa's little black book is. Quid pro quo? I want to know who stole my father's grimoire. This time, you go first. As far as I know, all Svetlana's secrets went with her to the bottom of the Vistula. <sighs> Should we take him to the Citadel, Chief? No, Vanya. We'll finish this here. Knew it. As soon as that as soon as that framing came up, I knew it. Why did you help Svetwana? Uh It was purely business. Her freedom in exchange for information. And? Did she tell you what she wanted? I guess. Yes. Where's my father's grimoire? Look for it in uh, Stanislav's circle of old friends. People who could take advantage of a missing grimoire. Thaumaturgists. Do you know who they are? Where I can find them? No. But, once you do... Don't neglect to inform me. <clears throat> and watch out. They're very dangerous people. So much double crossing going on. <laughs> right, so our father was indeed working. I need to get out of here. To liberate Poland. And that guy, Ivan Knitschkin, is the chief of the secret police, but appears to be working against them on the sly which makes sense now why he was with our father i suppose is it that yeah port praga there it is bloody nora okay I'm not sure why we needed the entire rigmarole it's kind of one of those situations where he doesn't feel like he's particularly on our side inverted commas it's more you know if we have the same goal we have the same goal that's great and if not then he'll push me aside you know what i mean One day. It's funny, you get so much more experience from um, side quests and stuff like that. Ah, you're finally here. We've been waiting for you. I'm afraid I was boring your charming sister with my chatter. Ah, oh, nonsense. I'll leave you two alone. You look tired. Is everything all right? 
Do you need my help? How do you know my address? People in Warsaw know who the Shulskis are. You're quiet this evening. Did something happen? This has been an especially difficult night for me. Is everything all right with Shetwana? Why do you ask? You two left without saying goodbye. Did something happen? Can he be trusted? I saw a golem. A golem? From Jewish legends? Is it a salutor? Yes, and it turned out to be a very real salutor. A material one. I didn't think that was even possible. And what does it have to do with Svetlana? I'm afraid Svetlana is dead. <sighs> I was afraid of this. Did the golem kill her? You could say that. The golem sank her boat by collapsing the roof over the pier. Svetlana intended to live off of selling other people's secrets. Secrets can be deadly. Do you want to know what she shared with me? Sure. You're not proposing blackmailing anyone with anything, are you? Nonsense. Of course not. As I told you, I want the world to see my truth. I want to stop the annihilation of countless human beings. But on my own, I am like Cassandra. Yet, with Svetlana's knowledge and you by my side, no one will have any choice but to believe me. I'm intrigued. The question is, can you bear the burden that she also carried? Of course. I've really got a lot on my shoulders. My father's secrets, his lover's death, the Ochrana, and now a golem. I think I can bear this too, if it lets me get rid of the other problems. Hmm. Can you say which secret of Svetlana's you mean? She had a whole chest full of them. That wasn't in the chest. And now it's only in my memory. Will you tell me what this is about? Not here, no. Get some rest first. At our next meeting, at the Narizhinskys. It's safe there, for now. Will you ever let me in on the secret? For now, I don't want to risk it. I don't even want to talk about it here. That your sister can remain uninvolved. One more question. Might this golem cause you any trouble? I'm sure I'll find out soon. Do I trust Rusty? I don't trust anyone anymore. <clears throat> I think we need to have a word. Eh. How do you know people like this, Rasputin? He's that miracle worker I was writing to you about. The one who helped me return to my senses. Not completely, I think. Given that you brought him with you. He just came to see me. I owe him a lot. It looks like he knows you better than I do. What makes you dislike him so much? It's how he talks and his eyes. They unsettle me. And he smells. Haven't you noticed? I can still smell him here. I can only congratulate you on having friends like that. Thank you. First Nyejit, now a gloomy hermit. And ladies of the night have started hanging around outside the windows. Are they also friends of yours? I'm just... Deeply attractive. Who are those women? Horace Victor, prostitutes. Women of easy virtue, daughters of Corinth. Courtesans, moths, hookers, floozies. I've been seeing two girls around here recently. They stand out on the street and peek into our windows. Maybe Abaurisa is playing a prank. This can wait. Ligia, I'm really dead on my feet, but there's one more thing we need to have a word about. I wonder what I don't know yet. I suspect those women are 
Oh, a much bigger deal than we've just made them out to be. I've also never heard of them being called moths before. Floozies, courtesans, whores, prostitutes, whatever else she said, sure. But a moth, that's an interesting one, just drawn to the flame. How long have you known your chief? What does that matter? So you knew he worked for the Ohrana? Yes. You'd have found in the end anyway, but he asked me not to tell you right away. I do like feeding the pride, but I don't want to annoy my sister. I understand that each of us has various relationships we're tangled up in. But I think we should start talking about them more often. Agreed. I'll only add that a contact like him is very useful in business. I'm guessing he knows how to arrange contacts for you. I'm sure he often invites you to all sorts of soirees and receptions, right? I don't always accept. It seems like we've each got our own miracle worker. I know who he is, and I treat him very cautiously. Plus, we've already established that you don't report to me about your acquaintances. Besides, it was Papa who introduced him to me all those years ago. What's the real reason we're talking about Konyechkin? There's a golem. I saw him once more, at Port Praga. Uh, what were you doing there? I was tracing Father's missing grimoire. Someone sent a golem after him. And now that person is trying to find us, too. Why? That's what I have to find out. Was there anyone who very openly disliked Father? More than you? Touché. Hmm. Did he know some sort of thaumaturge who might have been out for revenge? Or did he mention a coterie to you at any point? Did he meet up with other thaumaturges? As far as close friends, I think you already know that's a dead end. And he never introduced a thaumaturge to me. Did you know that someone sent a golem after our family? A golem? <laughs> the kind from Jewish legends? This one was very real. It destroyed half the port while it was trying to kill me. Port Praga? Are you all right? What were you doing there? I helped Fiatwana. She wanted to flee the country. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Do you know what forces you're playing with? You know full well who she is. Who she was. Sorry, what? <laughs> Svetlana is dead. She was just setting off on a lovely voyage when a golem appeared and... Svetlana is dead. We're finished. They'll put us both in prison. What will become of us? Don't worry, nothing will happen to us. I'll make sure of it. How will you do that? Oh, ye of little faith. You can trust me, sister. I do trust you. And look how far that's gotten me. That's a fair point. That's a little unfair, sister. Um, <clears throat> why would we be in trouble for this? Well, I mean, I guess we were trying to smuggle Svetlana out of the country, but, I mean, is there any reason to suspect... Like, nobody knows we were involved, surely. I think. You haven't experienced anything unusual recently? Nothing so remarkable, given I'm living with the Thaumaturge. You think there's any way I'd have let a golem slip by me? Also, why did... Kanesh can take our papers away from us if he's working. There was an option to ask him why he shot the guy, and I, I should have clicked it. It's, sometimes I worry if I'm going to click the wrong thing, and it'll send the conversation in a bad direction, or it'll end it, blah, blah, blah. But obviously, the um, in case you haven't noticed, the colour of the text does dictate whether it'll end a conversation or not, or move it on to the next stage, I should say. Why did he take my papers? Look, why don't we leave this conversation until morning, hmm? I agree. Good night. Why are my cigarettes?
been a long old day. Hey! Act 2, who does not lose and does not gain. You receive the quest, all our curses. Go to sleep. I can do that. Not to brag, but... Oh no. <laughs> fatal error. Not to brag, but fatal error? Okay, let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> Hopefully that's not gonna... Yeah, okay, phew. A little worried. That was about to be a consistent problem. What's over there? It's just a door, I think. Nothing in here? Nope. Whoa. It looks familiar. And yet different. Discover the source of the golden well, curse. Well. Is this a dream? Hmm, probably. Yeah, it's probably a little bit of both, really. It's very spooky. Cool. I need to get out of here. Is the house always this big? <laughs> it's too big, man. No point having a house this huge, I'm telling you. Thanks, Dad. The devil himself. Blind fool. Well, what don't I see? Maybe you could give me an answer this time. What don't you know? We've been seeing one another more and more since you died. Ask me about something you don't know. Okay. Why did you let a rat like Konechkin into our home? Now he's dogging Ligia and me. Were you working for him? Did you start informing on your customers for him? A fool's theory. Why is the golem pursuing our blood? You've not just put me in danger, but Ligia as well. Who did you hurt so much that the golem was aiming to? Hold on. It succeeded, didn't it? That's what killed you. That's what made the building fall on you. Who inflicted this punishment on you? What for? And how the hell do I lift it? Everything I've done... Was with your children in mind. I've heard it all before. For our good, I know. Thanks a lot. I definitely didn't ask for a blood curse. Are you finally going to say something? You've wasted your time. I left you all the answers. You just have to find them. Where am I supposed to look for them? In the Black Grimoire, which I nearly got from you? In that case, where is it? Who was it? Your friends? Your coterie that you hid even from your lover? Who are they? What were you planning? You possess everything I had. I have left you everything you need. Come back here! I'm not finished with you yet! <clears throat> Dad being helpful as always. Oh, I see Reed. I see Reed. Oh, I see mobile. My love for you is burning. It keeps me from eating. It keeps me from sleeping. It keeps me from living. Ligia, I'm begging you to end my agony. Agree to be my what is going on? Ligia's diary. Victor is back. On the one hand, I feel like crying with happiness. On the other, my brother has changed a lot, and I find it hard to see in him the boy he used to be. I can remember our 12th birthday, the last one we spent together. Papa, mother, Victor, and I... They took us on a carousel, then to Miss Jagoda's patisserie. Victor and I kicked each other under the table and stole the best bits from one another. I can still remember his laugh. Oh, how he laughed. Ha ha ha. With every fibre of his being. And so much that his cheeks quivered. Our parents shared a plum donut. Sharing a donut. Nonsense. And they looked almost happy. I thought back then that maybe it would be alright, that we'd be a real family, without yelling, secrets, or the awful pressure of expectations. Sadly, I was wrong. First mother left, then Victor, and now father. Everyone is leaving. I wonder how long until my brother leaves me again. Aww. 
I should call my sister. Unfinished text. As the aforementioned Nexus orphan knows, as well as men, there are women and children working in factories too, which most likely results from the sad truth that men, women and children all need to eat. The quote is intentionally perverse, yet it uncompromisingly highlights the fact that the children's work is an atrocity that... Dot, dot, dot. Oh, a little poke around the house. We don't get an opportunity to do this very often. Oh, that ends here, doesn't it? Yeah, where we got the will. Okay, let's go to Ligia. We're in chapter two now, so I'm hoping that means we're going to be able to find the next set of um, thingamajiggies. Horses in the sky. Hello? Teodosia Majewska's bathhouse. Victor, you're speaking. <laughs> This is Pilavin. I was waiting for your call, Commissioner. Go on. From the murder case. They released Cayetan in the morning. I thought you'd want to know. I cleared him of all the charges, but he doesn't really care. Pride is too high. <laughs> How did the fisherman's, I mean, Clara's case end? They'll hang her. No one will miss her. I understand. Oh, I'm sure she's got clients who might miss her. <clears throat> Look who's up. Sleeping beauty. I am very pretty. Have some coffee. In the morning, Grazenka brews it strong. Unless we're still arguing. Forgive me for yesterday. Warsaw was getting to me. Yes, I know the feeling. And I don't want to quarrel with you either. We'd be better off focusing on the obstacles ahead of us. Maybe I'll talk to Konechkin. I suspect he'll offer us a deal with the devil. For now, I'm just thinking out loud. I thought about what you were saying yesterday. Those strange phenomena related to the golem. Once, when I was taking a carriage to the store, the horse took fright. First it reared, then it started kicking, and after a moment it froze and dropped dead on the cobblestones. But it was already old. Could that have been the golem? So, so what's going on with Konechkin? <laughs> I'm gonna read his uh, diary entry because I'm 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 lost as to what his. Is he just working for himself essentially? Why would he shoot the guy? And why would he leave me alive? Not arrest me if he was working for the secret police full heartedly. Why would he work for our father? <clears throat> I feel like there's a third faction that we're unaware of beyond everything else. Recently, there's nothing I've been more sure of. Does that mean we might be in danger? I don't know how long it took the golem to reach father. He only found me in Warsaw that one time. I don't know how he works. I can't believe Father didn't know that either. There must be something in his office. Anything. Maybe. Is there any other way you could find out? Has anything been reported about Port Praga? I've been keeping an eye out, but nothing yet. But Svetlana's disappearance won't go unnoticed for long. Hyenas like fresh corpses. I had a dream about father. Me too. Right after he died. He was soothing me with my favorite lullaby. First he insulted me. And then blood poured down his <laughs> face. Slightly different dreams. <laughs> Very funny. Do you see him often in your dreams? This was only the second time. I hope there will be more. It's been a long time since I was quarantined in the hospital. They're not ordinary dreams. They're very realistic visions. I talk to him, I ask questions, but... I can't understand his answers. Why don't we focus on real life? I know that you're still sorting through things there, but I really have to visit our store in Miruf. I'm basically done. And I was planning to go there now, after breakfast. Will you join me? I should look through all of Father's things in the store. Everything he left behind. 
All right. Let's go. It's a very talky episode, isn't it? <clears throat> Which is fine, but I'm sleepy. <laughs> Not much has changed here. Just the sign. Or maybe the owner. That's right. Now it's your kingdom. I don't think queens dig through columns of numbers, exotic names, addresses, and consignment notes. Or scold customers who don't know the difference between powdered skull and powdered mummy. Have you developed an interest in the family business? What is the difference? Actually, what is the difference between mummy powder and skull powder? Skull powder is powder from a skull. You use it to make an extract for apoplexy and bleeding. Thomas Willis, a pioneer of brain research, had a habit of adding it to his hot chocolate. Yum. Powdered mummy is an oil. Egyptian mummies are covered in a dark substance that's a mixture of embalming fluids and organic fluids from the body of the deceased. This hardened human resin has to be scraped off the mummy and made into an oil. It helps with wounds, rashes, sore throats, and dizziness. It sounds like that substance is bitumen. And there are easier ways of getting it than scraping mummies. That might be. But our customers prefer scraped mummies. Unless you're considering diversifying our selection. Personally, I would just lie. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? I was about to say something witty and charming. It does sound like something I would do. The problem is they talk, and if they talk for too long, I get like an idea in my head, but it can't stay in my head for a long enough period of time because my memory just doesn't allow for that kind of thing. Oh my god. Oh. Sorry. Father clearly didn't want me to have anything to do with the family business, did he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to take care of the inventory. Try not to make more of a mess than there already is. There is nothing more terrifying than a name will remember that. Especially when it seems so inconspicuous, what you've done. Okay, let me have a look. There we go. So, go to Kajitan to capture Marana. And we can now do Memory Horizon as well. Cool. Who the devil are you? <clears throat> Register of goods. Most signatures are Mordechai's. A few are father's, and the most recent ones are Ligia's. Her handwriting hasn't improved any. Mordechai's signatures are filled with emotions. The older ones sing of a happy life and satisfaction from a job well done. But a year ago, the song changed. It became filled with sorrow, hatred, and bitterness brought on by a friend's betrayal. Mordechai's resignation letter. In a frigid tone, Mordechai resigns from work and asks father not to contact him and to steer clear of Mirov, where he intends to stay. Isn't the shop in Mirov? Cold words hide a burning hatred and strong belief that the former friend, Stanislav Svolsky, is to blame for Abraham Horowitz's disappearance. He's a man from whom one should look away. Ab okay, we've got two new characters in play. What is this? The photograph, Victor. A marvellous invention. Father was very fond of them. I meant what father has on his face. That smile. I'm sure someone he disliked had just died. Did you want something, or are you here to joke around? Both. The guy next to father. That's Hayat, right? Yes, he's just younger, Victor. That's how photographs work, you know. They stop time and place. I can also see here that they were friends. But a year ago, that ended, and they stopped working together. Yes, you mentioned it recently. It's a shame Papa never said why. And what a high... Hayat is a Jewish-sounding name, so, you know, maybe we've got a suspect here. I also remembered what I was going to talk about. People really did just put anything in their bodies. <laughs> Back in, like, yeah, just scrape the gunk off a mummy and ingest it, and that'll cure you for some reason. Who knows? 
I mean, the bitumen would do, would do something anyway. But the funny thing is, <clears throat> it's very easy to look back now, and I'm sure it's less egregious than it was. There are still people who do crazy, stupid things to their bodies now, of course, but we will look back in 50 years. Well, I will not be dead, but people... <laughs> I hope I'm not dead, but you never know. People... Oh, God, that's kind of scary. 50 years isn't that long. People will look back in generations' time at what people ingest now and be like, well, were you stupid? <laughs> what are you doing? Could Hayad have wanted our father to die? Could he have sent the golem after him? I think you'll have to ask him. I heard that he bought out one of the two rundown laundries here in Miruf, not too far away. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. The, um... I've, I've kind of realized the problem I have with the dialogue in this game. There's two main issues. One is that the camera is very, very boring during dialogue. It doesn't do anything. Um, my second problem is the lighting. I don't... I think they flatten. I think they've got two versions of the scene. They've got the one that you explore, and then they've got the dialogue version, because the, the lighting in the dialogue... I mean, look at this. This is very... You know, I have to really up the contrast and stuff for thumbnails, because the saturation is low, the contrast is low. It's very washed out. Now, that might be a point, but the thing is, when you're walking around the town and stuff like that, it isn't like this. Mm, when was this picture taken? Who knows, a quarter a century ago? We must not have even been five. But you two look more and more alike. Don't scare me. I'm taking another right, look around. Look at it now, and then look when we walk. Oh, Golem? Is that? Yes. I'll take a quick look around. Be careful. Golem. On my way. And that. Now look at it. You see what I mean? The lighting is much more dramatic in walking around mode compared to. Dialogue mode. It's too different. They rendered the scene twice because it's the same position. Like this stuff here. That mirror was there, and this this chest of drawers was here. This case thing, Majiggy. You know, it is the exact same position, but they flatten the hell out of the background. I'm not really sure why. I suspect it's to bring the characters more into focus, but the characters aren't like expressly lit either. I don't know. Like I think if they just stuck with the lighting we've got here, the game would be much better looking. I guess this area isn't particularly exciting, but it might be a um. Memory saving thing as well. Old clock. The clock has come to a standstill. Whoever winds it missed their moment. He winds up his favorite clock for the last time. The routine comes to an end, but isn't accompanied uh, isn't accompanied by the peace of impending retirement, but rather by the anger of someone leaving, even though they don't want to. It was inevitable. Continuing to work with Shulsky is impossible. Shameful. It's time to leave today. Click, click, click. Wait, does she have another mission for me then? I wanted to talk to you about a certain university. Has anything strange happened lately? Anything that might have something to do with the golem? You know, like two seconds ago. A cup fell from the table and someone stumbled while crossing the doorstep, but. I assume those aren't things that can be attributed to a golem. Never know. Most likely common clumsiness. That's good news. And some plaster fell from the ceiling, but that's probably because something was passing by. Nothing serious. Mm. Anything else? The store looks better than I remembered. More human. I've sorted through the remaining junk and I'm keeping the monkey brains, prepared corpses, and potency ointments just in the catalog now, so mothers can come here with their kids. Do you want to be better than father? People look at a businesswoman strangely, so I intend to prove to them that I'm better than businessmen. I'm doing my best. I would love to see a monkey brain as a child. <laughs> is this, I mean, is this where they get all their money from, from this rinky-dink store? that sells odd things. Maybe they just make a ton of money from this, but it does seem that they're... I mean, they're a storekeep. Why do they have so much renown as a family? Why are the, why are the Shulskis 
such a renowned family? Is it just the thaumaturge stuff? Because they just they run a store. <laughs> like you would have to run a very, very incredible store to have like no, I'm sorry, like how does a storekeep ever get the renown that Stanislav had? It's gotta be the thaumaturge stuff, or maybe there's more to it. What's this mysterious university? I'm giving a lecture at the Flying University. It's a very informal educational initiative, not to say secret. And an important one, especially for women who can get an education from us, which they are legally prohibited from doing under the partition. I'd like you to come with me. Sure. Of course I will go. I will be honored. No questions or bargaining? Who are you and what have you done to my brother? If it's important to you, there's no need to persuade me. Aww. The university is meeting in the antiquarian bookshop across the green square. Which brings us to the most important thing. Everyone brings something sweet, so I ordered some donuts from Mrs. Yagoda. The best ones. And the best donut is filled with... Plum. With plum. Now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Get those donuts, will you? I'll see what I can do. I mean, again, a plum donut sounds great. <laughs> I'm all in. You know, some people... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Quest expires soon. Shut up. Um, some people prefer green donuts. Those people are wrong, but it's okay. How big is this area? Where am I? Okay, we have a whole new area to explore. And the thing is, a ring donut. Ring donuts are fine, but you can't have a filling on a ring donut. Right? I mean, you can, but it's not as good. Chairman of the Bridge Lovers Club. Bridge Lovers Club. Pr Bridge Lovers Club. Bridge Lovers Club. That's, um, I remember that building. Yeah, the church. They were drawing for the thing. Look at this whole new area we've got. We want to make sure we explore it thoroughly and find everything. Blah, blah, blah. Find some new quests. Obviously, we're going to ignore the main quest. Um, oh, wow. That ends really soon. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. It actually tells you. Okay. So, we should prioritize that one before we do anything else. Well, we're going to explore first because I don't think that's going to be an issue. But then we will prioritize the donuts. Which just seems like the only the right thing to do anyway, really. A new Pluto telescope constructed by Mordechai Eisenbaum. Another quest. No. Oh. It's too late in the video for this up here. Can you feel it? Oh, Salitor. He moves with the bustle of the market and the rustle of sand grains around the stalls. It feels like the sun is standing at its zenith and burning mercilessly. Zenith? It's a visitor from a harsh desert land. A djinn. Oh, cool. Very cool. I felt something. Where is it? Lord of the desert sands and human desires, just be careful. Better not to make wishes in his presence. This is devious nature can only lead you astray. I made a comment at some point how there's only <clears throat> so many demons, you know. And that it seems a bit weird to me that they all happen to be in Poland, <laughs> basically. But, but, it seems, you know, it, it's, it's malevolent spirits from a wide range of cultures and religions and stuff like that. Um, you know, a djinn isn't the same as Bukovac. Bukovac is an individual named... Oh, wait, is it? I think... No, I think Bukovac is... I think it's just because it sounds more like a name, but I guess there is more than one Bukovac, and there's more than one Dibok, and there's more than one Leluk. Yeah, Lelucs are small and unruly salutors. Okay, so I, in my head there's only one of them, because I associate them with pseudo-monarchia... Daemonum, wherein I think it's just one of each demon exists. But maybe that's not even right. Maybe I've been interpreting that incorrectly. Maybe there are multiple of each of those demons in the Ars Gosia and the Pseudomonarchia. It's almost like I know what I'm talking about. It's crazy. 
Uh, let's read this little bit of text, then we'll go. Mirov, in the morning, window shutters creak open, glass tinkles in boxes, wares are stacked on scrubbed tabletops, and laughter and everyday chatter can be heard. Nowhere in Warsaw can you find the kind of bread, leather, shoes, and cooked meats that's in the market halls and stores of Mirov, or so claims Grzynka, who supplies our home with all essential products. Praga. What's this do? Oh. Away from the downtown hustle and bustle, somewhere out of the way, beats the true heart of Warsaw. Praga is like a pot into which mischievous demiurge has thrown the salt of workers' vehemence, the bones of ecclesiastical power, and foreign Russian seasoning. It's here that toothless factory workers spend their last coins in taverns, preachers at their ambos call for repentance. An ambo? What's an ambo? And soldiers at the fort are hard at work removing any Polish scum who dares step out of line by even an inch. In Praga, there are plenty of new buildings under construction, trade is thriving, and the tram line is being expanded. Still, the street kings make sure that none of the progress removes too many of their dark alleys or secret dens. Gentrification is a nightmare for criminals, I tell you. What was the word I was looking for? Um, ambo. Is it like a pulpit, I guess? I think my phone's too far away to check. Oh, no, it's not. See it. One sec. Alexa, what is an ambo? In early Christian churches, the ambo was a raised desk or platform from which the gospels or epistles were read or chanted. There you go. Hopefully you could hear that. A raised... It's like a pulpit, basically. Solsky Family Shop. The family store in Mirov is piled with antiqu antiques. I always want to say antiquities. Works of art and various curios. Fantastic word. It's a place that made Father too enterprising to call himself an aristocrat, while his accumulated wealth also made him too rich to call himself an ordinary businessman. Navigating Warsaw's social strata can be difficult sometimes. They, they, to be fair, they're kind of calling into question what I was talking about. The store used to have many regular customers, many occasional ones, and a whole host of onlookers who'd pop in just to browse. Today, the merchandise is covered with a layer of dust, and the fumes of suspicion are settled in the cracks. Ligi is trying to restore the priest's place to its former glory, and it looks as though, through hard work and patience, she will succeed. And Gostini to bazaar. Well, it's a bazaar, so I guess we do have a sort of Middle Eastern kind of vibe going on. Flowers, what colour? Here they come in all the colours of the rainbow. How about a genuine Rococo vase? At least that's what the stubborn seller claims. A watch for your grandfather, father or lover. Hopefully they're different people. A string of pearls, a kilo of juicy apples. A kilo, is that a lot of apples? That's a lot of apples. A gajinsi dwa... All you have to do is think of a wish and one of your vendors is sure to make it come true. Just watch your pockets, especially when you come with the intention of buying expensive original artifacts. Just as easy to leave this place with hands full of dreams that is, as it is to have them emptied, along with your wallet. Now it says two. No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Right, well, we're gonna track this down. I guess. I don't know, I'm nervous. As I am want to do. About this mission that I've got. However. Uh, first of all, it's cool that we can... I think we're going to get this gin. Let me have a look, actually. If we look in our farmaturgy. Can we see it? Do you reckon it's that top one? Heart? Could be, couldn't it? Yeah, it's got the thing on its head. Um... The mission that we have <clears throat> that's got the timer on it. Pick up donuts from the Pisces I suspect we just have to do that one before we do the golem thing, probably. If I had to guess, I think like side quests aren't gonna limit us from doing this. So, what I want to do is carry on exploring this area fully, and then we'll do cognitive function, and then we'll do all of us. We're gonna, we're gonna focus on side quests for a little bit. Ugh, I'm gonna stretch my legs and my body because everything hurts. I worked out very hard yesterday. Oh, boy. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers much of as always. Bye-bye.